Okay, so I introduced you to the Minkowski metric in the last video. So now we're going to have a look at, well, contrasting the Euclidean and Minkowski metrics by exploring a little bit more the geometry that they define. So if you'll remember, we defined the metric by essentially specifying what's known as the line element, which defines essentially the infinitesimal separation between any two points in the geometry. So we defined the line element by essentially defining the metric tensor. So now we give the definition of the metric tensor by just defining its components. In general, they're given the name G, and then we expand the components using this one-form basis. Don't worry if you don't understand it as the one-form basis, it's just kind of the infinitesimal amount in each coordinate direction. And I'm just missing a tensor product symbol for simplicity. So as we saw, the metrics for Euclidean and Minkowski space are fairly simple. For Euclidean space, it's simply just the identity matrix. And we usually like to express the identity matrix essentially using this Kronecker delta matrix, which is basically defined as being whenever these two indices are equal, it's one, so the naught naught, one one, etc. components are one, and all the other components are zero. This is just essentially a way of writing the identity matrix in a more sort of tensorally useful way. So the Euclidean metric being the identity just simply gives us a fairly simple line element, which is just the sums of the squares of each of these dx's, dx squared plus dy squared, and so on. So let's just take a second to explore this geometry a little bit more now. So I'm going to consider the Euclidean geometry again, just so I can draw a picture. We're going to consider the Euclidean geometry of R2. Okay, so this is our copy of R2. And now what we're going to do, or rather how we're going to look at the geometry defined by this line element, is we're essentially going to, well, first of all, we're going to not consider the infinitesimal version of the line element, we're going to consider the finite, or essentially, if you like, the integrated version of the line element, essentially the delta s squared version, which is essentially here just going to be delta x squared, and so on. Well, we've got two coordinates, so it's just delta x plus delta y squared, if this is x and this is y. So remember, we're just doing Euclidean geometry. This is a fairly simple space, R2, and it just has the fairly simple Euclidean metric. So one way that we can probe this line element is essentially looking at, or looking at subsets of points in the space for which essentially the line element distance from the origin is gonna be some constant value. So we essentially, we just set delta S squared equal to some constant, let's just call it S, and then we study or we look at all of the points. Now the kind of convenient thing that measuring points from the origin does for us is it essentially allows us to get rid of this interval symbol, and we can just consider essentially because the interval from the origin to a point X, this interval here is going to be delta X, delta x is just x when we measure these intervals from the origin, we can now kind of conveniently talk about this line element interval just using a kind of function expression like this here. So now this s squared, this is representing effectively the distance from the origin of our coordinate system, and now we can now just look at essentially the level curves of this function where this distance is going to be constant. Okay, so in the Euclidean geometry, the curves of constant distance from the origin are fairly simple. We can just see here, x squared plus y squared, this is just defining a circle in this plane of some radius s. So essentially, at some distance s from the origin, all of the points that lie on this orange circle, which I've drawn here, this circle has some radius 
S. All of the points x squared, x and y that lie on this circle all have a constant distance s from the origin. Remember this s is actually delta s and it's effectively the distance from the origin delta s. So this is what it's like in the Euclidean geometry. Curves of constant distance from the origin just simply lie on these circles that I've drawn here. So this is simply how things work in the Euclidean geometry. We have these circles which represent the points which all lie at a constant distance from the origin. So it's good to keep this picture in mind of what R2 looks like when we give it the Euclidean geometry. I just want to import, make an important, or I just want to stress an important point now that essentially what we've done is we've taken R2, which we remember we can view as just, well it's simply just a, a set of two tuples, x and y, and each of these points just represents a point that we kind of visualize in this kind of x and y picture, and this is just a kind of convenient way to display all the points of R2 in a single picture, it's just a flat plane. But now we need to remember that this is just one particular representation of R2. This coordinate grid which we've chosen to draw with conveniently orthogonal axes, we could have equally constructed any other strange looking coordinate grid. Something that looks like this, say the x prime and the y prime axes. But now, something that's really, really useful about this line element is that it's universal, or that it's, it's a coordinate independent quantity. Essentially, because the metric is a tensor, it, does, it, well, it, it depends on the coordinates in the definition, by definition, but then it also is an object which is kind of defined freely of those coordinates and that since the coordinates are in essence arbitrary, they are just the chart functions of the manifold, when we change coordinates, all of the tensors are going to change accordingly. And so we might ask, well, what's the line element going to look like in a new set of coordinates? We're going to ask this question in much more detail in upcoming videos when we discuss in much more detail coordinate translations, but for now I just want to point something out. So the important thing to realise when we draw a picture like this is that the line element is going to be constant on this picture for both of these coordinate systems. Essentially, what this means now is that we can measure points that are, say, a certain distance from the origin in this first coordinate system as lying somewhere on this circle here, well, we can now look in the other coordinate system where this point is effectively going to lie. And because the line element is going to be equal, regardless of the coordinate system, this expression on the left-hand side doesn't change, just the coordinate part changes. We can effectively work out what the points are going to be of this um, effectively spaced point from the origin in these new coordinates. Now, that doesn't really look too useful yet, but we're going to see in Minkowski space this becomes incredibly useful. And we're going to be able to simply just read off some relativistic physical effects by simply drawing a picture like this, drawing effectively a representation of the line element, which now we should remember and realise is effect it's going to be kind of independent and free of the coordinate system. So however we draw it, it's not going to depend on the coordinates it's been used to draw it. And so any coordinates that we draw, we can effectively use the constancy of the line element or the independence of the line element from those coordinates to perform calculations and match things up in various coordinate systems. Okay, so in summary now, this was the Euclidean geometry of R2. I just want to stress that this is one particular geometry we could choose for R2. As we've seen, we specify it by giving a line element, or rather a metric tensor, but we could have specified and chosen any other geometry. As we're going to see in the next video, we're going to choose the geometry for R2, the Minkowski geometry. And now remember that R2 
we've said is isomorphic to our two-dimensional space-time, and we're going to study in the same way as we did in this video by essentially looking at the points that the that are constant distance from the origin in this in a very similar way. Because if you remember, the Minkowski line element is very similar to this Euclidean line element, except there's just a minus sign on the first component. And we're going to see what dramatic dis differences having just this one minus sign introduces for the geometry.